Today I bring you four words that have two things in common. One is that they all have a lot of character and the other is that they all begin with the letter P. The words are palimpsest, pirouette, perspicacity and pasture. As usual you'll discover their meaning, pronunciation, origin, usage and more. Do keep watching. But first, if you haven't already, do subscribe to The English Nut on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and X. Thank you. A palimpsest initially referred to a manuscript or piece of writing material on which the original text had been scraped or washed off only to be reused. But over time it has come to signify something far more profound. A surface or object that bears traces of its past, layered with memories and meaning. The word comes from the ancient Greek palimpsestos, meaning scraped again. Just like an old parchment, our lives too can be seen as palimpsests with experiences written and rewritten over time. The city was a palimpsest of cultures, each layer telling a story of conquest and coexistence. Her diary became a palimpsest with old entries barely visible beneath new reflections. History itself is a palimpsest with each era inscribing its mark upon the previous one. English novelist George Orwell, who was born in Motihari, Bihar, wrote in his novel titled 1984 about how governments rewrite history and distort facts to brainwash society. Day by day and almost minute by minute, the past was brought up to date. In this way, every prediction made by the party could be shown by documentary evidence to have been correct. Nor was any item of news or any expression of opinion which conflicted with the needs of the moment ever allowed to remain on record. All history was a palimpsest, scraped clean and reinscribed exactly as often as was necessary. If you haven't read 1984, I highly recommend that you do. Though it was published in 1948, it's more relevant than ever today. The word palimpsest was suggested by Sarcastic Buddha for you. Let's twirl our way into pirouette, a word as graceful as the motion it describes. A pirouette is a spinning movement performed on one foot, typically by a ballet dancer. It's a word that conjures images of elegance, control and a touch of theatrical flair. Pirouette comes from the French word for spinning top. And though its modern meaning is rooted in dance, it can also be used metaphorically to describe any swift, graceful turn. She executed a perfect pirouette, her form a blur of beauty. They pirouette so fast their scarves flare out over their heads. In politics, he was known for his verbal pirouettes, deftly spinning away from difficult questions. American novelist Jodi Pico wrote, Turn around and the people you thought you knew might change. This is the reason that dancers learn early on how to spot while doing pirouettes. We all want to be able to find the place where we started. The word pirouette was suggested by Chandra Chakraborty. Let's sharpen our minds with perspicacity, a word that speaks of keen insight and perceptiveness. To be perspicacious is to have a clear and deep understanding of things, to see beyond the surface and grasp the true nature of a situation. The word derives from the late Latin noun perspicacitas, meaning sharp-sightedness. And it's a quality often admired in thinkers, leaders and detectives alike. Her perspicacity was evident in the way she quickly identified the flaw in the plan. The detective's perspicacity allowed him to solve the case that had baffled others. With remarkable perspicacity, she navigated the complex negotiations, seeing through every ruse. Emery Tate, the American chess player who held the title of international master, once said, My unmatched perspicacity, coupled with sheer 
indefatigability makes me a feared opponent in any realm of human endeavor. Hmm. He was certainly confident of himself. The word perspicacity was suggested by Sudha Mysore Ranganath. Let's wander into pasture, a word that evokes images of open fields, grazing animals, and the peacefulness of rural life. A pasture is a piece of land covered with grass used for grazing livestock. But beyond its literal meaning, pasture can also symbolize a place of calm and contentment, a retreat from the hustle and bustle of the world. The word comes from the Latin pastura, meaning grazing. It's a reminder of simpler times when life moved at the pace of nature. The cattle roamed freely in the lush pasture, a picture of bucolic tranquility. After years in the city, he longed for the quiet pastures of his childhood. Holly Golightly, the protagonist of Truman Capote's famous novella Breakfast at Tiffany's, often sings a song that goes, Don't want to sleep, don't want to die, just want to go a traveling through the pastures of the sky. These words express the character's restless nature and desire for freedom. To put someone out to pasture is used to describe the act of retiring someone from active duty or work, usually because they are considered to be past their prime. It's often done forcibly, against the wishes of the person, by those who consider him or her too old to be useful. After decades of dedicated service, the old professor was put out to pasture, though his students still revered him. In the fast-paced world of technology, it doesn't take long before even the brightest minds are put out to pasture. Baby boomers aren't going to tolerate being put out to pasture, wrote Nancy Keats, reporter of the Wall Street Journal. Baby boomers are the people who were born in the baby boom years after World War II between 1946 and 1964. The word pasture was suggested by Dia. And there you have it, dear lingua files, palimpsest, pirouette, perspicacity and pasture. Whether you're tracing the layers of history, spinning in joy, being perceptive or simply grazing in the fields of thought, these words are sure to enrich your vocabulary and your life. Until we meet again, may your words be as varied and vibrant as the world they describe. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm the English Nut. Bye for now.